Hi, and welcome to Dr. Vanderveen's AP Chemistry Podcast. Today we're talking about redox reactions, a very important class of reactions, and specifically we're focusing on balancing redox reactions today. My objectives for this podcast is to outline the process for balancing redox reactions, and I'm using the half reaction method. The other thing we're going to do is to do two examples of balancing redox reactions, first in acidic conditions, and then we'll extend it to basic conditions. They're very similar. Don't be thrown off by this. So let's talk about the general process, and we're going to start with acidic conditions because it's shorter, and then later on I'll tell you how to extend it into those basic conditions. The first thing we want to do is to write out our skeleton half reactions. You put the reactants with the products that go with them. You don't need to know at this point which one's oxidized, which one's reduced. You don't really need to assign oxidation numbers to do this. Um, it's usually pretty obvious from looking at the reaction what has to go together. What you're going to do then for each of the half reactions, because you will have two of them, is we're going to balance all the atoms other than hydrogen and oxygen, if you have any in your reaction. And then what we're going to do, to balance out the oxygen atoms, we're going to add water molecules, H2O, to balance the oxygen atoms. And then, to balance out the hydrogen atoms, we're going to add H plus ions. These are redox reactions, so electrons are part of each half reaction. And so we're going to add electrons to balance the charge. What I mean by that is we're going to add electrons to either the reactant or product sides so that the sum of the charges is the same on both sides for each half reaction. And what we'll do is multiply the half reactions by some whole number coefficient. And the reason we want to do that is that we want the number of electrons gained to equal the number of electrons lost. Um, this conservation of charge is critical. Um, and so that's how we achieve that. Finally, what we'll do is add up the two half reactions. We'll combine like terms. We'll simplify. We'll make things as um, concise as possible. So let's go through an example of how to balance a redox reaction in acidic conditions. That's what we have just talked about. So we've got this reaction. We have a dichromate with methanol to form these two products, and it's stated that we are in acidic conditions. Okay. So the first thing we really want to do is um, do our, half, our skeleton equation. Now, if you're looking at the equation here, it's pretty clear that the dichromate and the chromium-3 ions are going to go together. It's pretty clear that the methanol then is going to go with this product. And that's really the basis of putting together our skeleton equation. And so here are the skeleton half reactions based on that. The dichromate with the chromium-3, the methanol with the other product. So on the next one, we'll go ahead and actually start writing out the balanced half reactions and doing this whole process. All right, so for the dichromate half reaction, the first thing we need to do is to balance the non-oxygen, non-hydrogen atoms. So that would be chromium. So if you look, we have two chromiums on the left, only one chromium atom on the right. So what we're going to do is insert a coefficient of two here to take care of the chromium. All right, the next thing we want to do is balance our oxygens. Well, we have seven oxygen atoms on the left and none on the right. So we are going to add seven H2Os to the right-hand side. Well, that now gives us 14 H pluses on the right, and there are none on the left. So we are going to add 14 H pluses here to balance out our hydrogen atoms. Finally, we need to put in our electrons. We need to have some of the charges be the same on both sides. Well, if you look at all of our positive charges here, we have 14 pluses and two minuses, which gives us a positive charge of 12. If we look on the right-hand side, all of our charge comes from the chromium, so our positive charge is 6. We need to have a 12 on both sides. So what we're going to do is add 6 electrons to the left, and that will give us 6 positive charges on both sides. And so we're done with the top half reaction for the time. Let's go look at our other half reaction with the methanol. Now for our non-hydrogen, non-oxygen atoms, we have carbon. Well, we have one carbon on both sides, so we don't have to do anything further there. 
we look at our oxygens. We have one oxygen on the left and two on the right. Well, we need two on both sides. So we are going to add an H2O molecule to the left here. And then we have to count our hydrogens. All right, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens on the left and two on the right, which means I need four more on the right-hand side. So I'm going to add four H pluses right here. All right, and then we need the sum of the charges to be the same. Well, there's no charges at all on the left. We have four H pluses on the right. So in order to make the sum of the charges be the same, I'm going to add four electrons to the right. Because now the charge on the right is zero, the sum of the charges on the left is zero. All right. So we're, we've written out this complete half reactions, and now we're ready to figure out what we can do to make the number of electrons lost equal to the number of electrons gained. We have six electrons gained here and four electrons gained here. The lowest common multiple of four and six would be 12. And so I'm going to multiply this top half reaction by two. And I'm going to multiply this lower half reaction by three. That gives us 12 electrons in each half reaction, and they are now going to cancel out. Um, so we can now sum up our overall reaction here, and then we'll simplify. So 2 times 14 would be 28 H pluses on the left, plus 2 dichromates, plus 3 H2Os, plus three methanols plus uh, or yields three of those plus twelve H plus plus four Cr three plus plus fourteen H two O's. These are long problems to do. There's no way to really get around that. All right, but we have some consolidating we can do. If you look, you'll see that there's 28 H pluses on the left and 12 H pluses on the right. Well, we can consolidate that much like you would in algebra. So we can subtract 12 H pluses from each side, and that leaves us ultimately with 16 H pluses on the left. The other thing I wanted to point out you look carefully, you'll notice there are three H2Os on the left and 14 H2Os on the right. We can do a similar consolidation here. So I'm going to subtract three H2Os from each side. And that leaves us ultimately with 11 H2Os on the product side. And we are done with this problem. Let's go on and talk how it's different when we do basic conditions. All right, It starts off exactly the same. You are actually going to go through the entire process as if you were balancing this reaction in acidic conditions. And then what you'll do, is when you're all done balancing it in acidic conditions, you're going to add hydroxide ions to both sides of the equation, enough that you can neutralize any H plus ions that were in that equation when you balanced it in acidic conditions. And then you'll simplify and consolidate, put all the like terms together and not leave, you know, H pluses on both sides and waters on both sides, etc. And there wouldn't be any H pluses, but you know what I mean. So let's go through and do an example. We have this um, redox reaction here. We have hydrogen peroxide reacting with chlorine di dioxide uh, to form hypochlor. Uh, to form the two products, and we are um, given the information that it's in basic conditions. So let's start in the same basic way. We want to write out our skeleton equation. All right. So for the first one, it's pretty clear that the chlorine dioxide is going to go with the chlorite ions. So we're going to put ClO2 and ClO2 minus together in one half reaction. We'll put the hydrogen peroxide and the O2 together. All right, so let's start with this top half reaction. For my non-hydrogen, non-oxygen atoms, I've got chlorine. I've got one chlorine on the left, one chlorine on the right, so I don't have to do anything there. I have two oxygens on the left 
and the two oxygens on the right, so nothing is needed there. There's no hydrogens on either side, so I don't have to worry about that. But I think all I really need is one electron on the left. So we're done with that half reaction for now. And let's go down here. I've got hydrogen peroxide, um, no hydrogen, no non-hydrogen, non-oxygen atoms. I've got two oxygen atoms on the left and two on the right. But I have two hydrogen atoms on the left, and I need, therefore, two H pluses on the right-hand side. Um, let's see, the sum of the charges on the left, obviously, is zero. And I've got two H pluses over here, so I must need two electrons on the product side. All right, so far so good. I've got two electrons there, one electron here. So I'm going to multiply this top reaction through by two so that um, the number of electrons lost is the same as the number of electrons gained. And then I'm going to sum up my reaction here. All right, so the electrons will cancel. This will be a nice, simple addition. So I have two ClO2 plus H2O2 giving me 2ClO2 minus plus O2 plus 2H plus. All right, now if we were asked to balance this in acidic conditions, we'd be done. But we're doing it, as we pointed out earlier, in basic conditions. So what we need to do now is add hydroxides to neutralize the H pluses. So I've got two H pluses on the right, which means to neutralize that, I need to add two hydroxide ions to both sides. All right, now... H plus plus OH minus, that's going to make water. All right, so this is now 2H2O. Let's add all this up again, 2ClO2 minus plus O2 plus the 2H2O. And on the left-hand side, we have 2. Uh, and I believe that we are done. We don't have any waters on both sides. We don't have, um, that would be the thing you sometimes need to consolidate with these. And so I'm going to circle in green our final answer. Perhaps not the neatest handwriting, but all the information is there. I hope you feel more comfortable with balancing redox reactions now, and I'll see you another time.